Please be advised that Little Miss Recap contains adult language. Hey everybody, I'm Che Diaz, and I'm here to say you're gonna kick it in middle school, Joe. Like, what? <laughs> 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 Welcome to Little Miss Recap, the podcast where we do cameos in bed, even though our partner's trying to fucking sleep at 2 a.m. Dude, I gotta get my $25. <laughs> my name is Amy Archer. I am your host. I am here with the lovely, the amazing Leslie DJ, who is <laughs> who is so decked out in her pink gear today. Let me describe what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a Barbie hat, and I'm seeing an And Just Like That shirt. Yes. And then behind her, I'm seeing a wonderful Sinister Girls poster. So we got a lot Yay. going on here. We do. So the Barbie hat that I'm wearing I actually got in Vegas when I was there last year. They had a Barbie exhibit and I went to that mm. big Barbie store and it was so beautiful. And I got the hat. And the reason why I'm wearing it, aside from being heavily promoted, this Barbie movie, they're not paying me, you know. Mm-hmm. But anyways, mm-hmm. I have this ring light that is blaring into my face. So this is helps me kind of... <laughs> <laughs> you know balance that out and then got just it. like that shirt i got you know the first year around before it ever aired because i was so excited about the series mm-hmm. so there you go yeah yeah how did that work out <laughs> oh it's it's great yeah you are still <laughs> i have to give you credit because you are still as enthusiastic about this show as you ever were i do i am i yes. you know i love this show and and love is a tricky word because I mean Mm. I love it in the sense that I love these characters I'm very nostalgic for them Mm -hmm. I do obviously every week we talk about the issues with what they're Mm -hmm. doing with most of these characters and kind of Mm -hmm. like the storytelling and all that but I still am looking forward to seeing what happens next and I think that that's good enough for me yeah I agree Um, I also want to say that I've started to question, so we're always talking about like, this is more like the original show. This is not, this is, I'm starting to question, maybe we don't need it to be like the original show. Like maybe that is the problem. That is the problem. See that you tapped into it. This is not, and they've said it, but then they go back on their word because they're like, yeah. this is not sex in the city. This is like a new chapter. But mm-hmm. then they rely on a lot of the tropes from the first series. So it's like, yes. which is it? Yes. Like they'll be like, this is not sex in the city, but we have this 20 year old joke that we never got to tell. So we need to write an entire scene around it. Exactly. Like, no, and that is no. the issue. Yeah. All right. So let's start. We're looking at in just I almost said Injustice for All, like the Metallica album. And justice for All. <laughs> We're looking at and just like that, season two, episode six, Bomb Cyclone. Do you remember the Bomb Cyclone? I sure do. That was a nightmare and a half. Yeah, you were living in New York City. You've lived there your whole life. So you've lived through the bomb cyclone. The bomb cyclone. And I think that the reality gays were trying to come to town or they brought the cyclone with them. Yeah, I remember that. And I treaded in the snow for those boys. They better love me. Yes. (laughs) All right. So I'm going to do things a little different today. Um, I decided that I'm going to go character by character. Okay. Instead of uh, scene by scene. So we'll see if you guys like it. Let me know in the comments or in the Facebook group. It, yes, it's called Little Miss Recaps Backdoor Friends. Yes, I know that could mean anal lovers. That's fine. Hey, you, wanna, join- you love anal on the weekends and you want to come into our group? You, whatever. <laughs> Dude, I have no, no judgment. judgment here. Come on in. Come on in. We're like Charlotte. We're super sex positive. Super sex positive. I have thoughts about that scene. Okay. <laughs> and they're too. not what you think they might be. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So we open, we're going to start with Carrie. Okay. Okay. Because there's a group scene. You'll see. All right. So we open on Carrie zooming with an quote unquote out of touch millennial. We get this again. Like, oh, these out of touch millennials who don't even read our books before they promote it. Okay. I'm a writer. You're a writer. I've been on many of these Zooms promotional Mm -hmm. things. Okay. I do not presume the person read my entire book. Of course not. I The way I see it is like, if they read the press release, I'm happy that they know the yeah. synopsis of the story. And this is the difference between a writer who came up in the 80s and 90s and a writer who is of our 
our generation Mm -hmm. because you know i once had an older writer say to me like don't ask people for reviews like that's undermining your book i'm like okay you clearly have like a legacy publishing agreement with one of the big fives because we have to beg people you to have review to, our books. You have to be a hustler to publish a book. You have to send free copies to reviewers mm-hmm. and a nice mm-hmm. little thank you note just for even reading it. Yeah, And, you know, it's a lot of give and take. Yeah. And if somebody's like, Amy, what's your book about? I'm happy to tell you. Oh, I will tell you in details. Yep. Because even if, and Carrie said this, like, oh, you didn't read my book and the reviewer said well for my audience like the whole audience didn't read the book you know what i mean like tell us what it's about so that was weird anyway so her computer falls and she must go to the store to buy another one so later she and Seema go computer shopping and i would like to say she does say that her last macbook lasted eight years and this is why i will only buy macintosh computers because (laughs) my my mac that I wrote my book on, that I launched a podcast on, that I've done everything on, is also eight years old. And now my teen daughter's using it. Still Bravo. going. Never a problem. Mm-mm. Yep. So Carrie says, I'm a very loyal person. I even have a travel agent, which I thought was pretty funny. Yeah. Well, a lot of rich people do that. <laughs> sure. Sure. Seema asks her if she will summer with her in the Hamptons. And Seema's like, you know, I go with my married friends and they bring their kids and they're so annoying. I hear you, girl. I Mm -hmm. hear you. I'm one of those annoying people and I hear you. (laughs) So later, Carrie's at her publisher's office and she tells Carrie she's been chosen to speak at WidowCon, which the technical name is Life After Death, a Widow's Storytelling Event. I have a confession to make. Yes, tell me. Being such a nerd about um therapy and therapy, <laughs> all things mental health, and right, I, I would love to be at this event. Not because my husband's dead, but I would still <laughs> love to go. Well, my ex husband is dead to me, so I am there a perfect go. demographic. No, I actually was like, this is like another book convention. How do I get in on this? Should I write a book about a dead husband or something? Yeah, Because I would love to be around authors. Like, I love that idea. So it wasn't as cringy as maybe they thought it would be, but we're like book nerds because we write. Yes, yes. And And there's a con for everything. Yeah, and I'm a memoirist and you you wrote a memoir, Mm -hmm. right? Yes. Essays, yeah. And we love memoir. And so, yeah, I want to hear Widowcon. I want to go. Yep. Sign me up. mm -hmm. We can be the uh, correspondents. Yes, we'll report back. We'll just recap correspondents. So the event coordinator is Karen Moore. Event coordinator is Karen Moore, and she's played by Rachel Dratch. Mm-hmm. Now, did you have something on this? So it was funny because Rachel Dratch was introduced as Karen, and of course she wants to. She goes by Carrie now with a K because not a good time for white women named Karen. You know, it's not wrong. That- that joke, which actually <laughs> made me j- giggle a little bit. But yeah, but I was like. This is not canon for Sex and the City because they were trying to make it seem like they were writing partners and they wrote like movies together, like rom-coms. That didn't happen. And like, I knew this from my mental database and then I looked it up and I was like, ah, new character. They're just pretending like this happened. Okay. And Okay, so wait a minute. (laughs) So this is addressing one of the main issues I have with the show is that they act like there's this big 20-year void between Mm -hmm. what we saw and what we're seeing now. So you're telling me they wrote this fake thing that yep. happened in the past but not on sex in the city so exactly that's actually a good thing okay. yeah wow. so we never saw any of this i didn't even know that carrie tried to write a script at any point like that was never okay. brought up so this All is right. brand new information good. and i was like okay cool so the only reason i bring this up is because rachel dratch has been doing like interviews about her time on sex in the C- on and just like that I almost says sex in the city you mm. see how it is it's really yeah. hard to um, you know, separate the two, separate the Differentiate two, the two. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Do you want me to talk about this now? Because she talks about Che because remember Rachel Dratch is from SNL. She's known for improv comedy, brilliant, brilliant performer. Mm-hmm. But so this is from the website, the messenger.com. And it was published on July 20th, 2023 by Charlotte about Walsh. We'll talk about it. Okay, so I just want to give Charlotte Walsh her due. So this is the question that is asked. It's a Q&A. On the possibility that Che Diaz could ever be in 
on Saturday Night Live or Second City, and Rachel Dredge says, how dare you? Laughter. <laughs> so she starts laughing. And she goes, no, Che Diaz is strictly stand-up, and in how they came up in, in their career, so there wouldn't be a lot of crossover with Second City. I think they would have been over at Zany's down the street, which is a comedy club. Um, they, they make it very clear that, excuse me while I delve into the character, but they make it clear that they're all for themselves. It's this mm-hmm. all about me character, which is kind of the stereotype of a stand-up. I'm more of an ensemble, improv person. I think Che embodies that pretty strongly. So I don't know that they'd be a crossover. That was my college course on the character of Che. The end. <laughs> okay. All right. I I don't disagree with anything said there. Exactly. I think I think Rachel Dratch was tasteful in her mm-hmm. um, response. In her response, and she brought up what we talked a little bit about last episode was Che is just part of Che's horribleness is that they're a stand up. Yeah, not necessarily, you know, what a else. person. It's yeah. just they are this idea of a stand up comic, and that's all they are. Like stand up. Like I have a cousin who's doing stand up. He just started. He's he's awesome. But, you know, he's very multifaceted. First of all, the fact that he does comedy is like a shocker to me because I was mm-hmm. like, dude, really? Mm-hmm. It's dark shit, but it's funny. Um, but so he's so multifaceted that that's the surprise. Not that being a stand up is his whole identity. He's right, an actual right. person. Right. I will tell you that um, there is this pretty famous therapist named Guy Winch, and he does a lot of work with Lori Gottlieb. They host a very popular podcast called Dear Therapists. Oh, I And I met him at um, a psychotherapy uh, networkers symposium this year. And I was like, you know, guy, um, you know, nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. And we were talking a little bit about his career and stuff. And he just very casually says, oh, when I was doing stand-up at a bunch of clubs in New York right after 9-11, I honed blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, wait, wait, records wait, what? Go, what? What? <laughs> Apparently, like, he was so distraught after 9-11, he had lost so many people that he funneled that energy into doing stand-up. Wow. And I was like, you need to write a book about this. Like, here we go with the memoir again. I'm like, yeah. you need to write a book about this. I would totally just, read about that, yeah. Yeah, but but like what you're saying, like he's this totally serious guy that you would never expect, and he's a stand-up. It's so wild. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. All right, so we'll talk a lot more about Che in a little bit. Okay. So this annoying Karen is here, whatever, and she makes a big deal about getting Carrie the main slot at WidowCon, and she keeps saying like, but you better show up, but you better show up, and Carrie's like, I'll fucking show up, dude. What are you talking about? <laughs> So now for some unknown reason, Carrie calls Che to be her emotional support at WidowCon. This made no sense to me. Why she wouldn't call Miranda, Charlotte. It it was weird. Because I mean, Uh one thing, Charlotte might be too of a cheerleader because she's so supportive that Carrie Mm -hmm. might need a little Mm -hmm. tough love. So you go with Miranda, but it's like, no, let's just toss in Che because we need to incorporate Che somehow. Or maybe go with Naya, who's getting a divorce from the love of her life. Or mm-hmm. I don't know, like any anyone else. Let's put it that way. So Che is, it's the middle of the day, and they're just chilling and smoking a J. And Che says, sure. You know, my mom, Miranda, says I need to leave the house anyway. And there's like kind of silence around that. Mm-hmm. Later, we have Miranda, Naya, Charlotte, and Carrie. And they're having dinner at Naya's and they're talking about amicable breakups. And Carrie tells Miranda about how last season Steve said he would never get a divorce. So Miranda decides she's going to be the one who has to talk with him, obviously. Mm -hmm. And they do this thing again. This is so Carrie and Miranda. Miranda's like, why didn't you tell me? And Carrie's like, maybe for your own good. Like they just do this all the time. All the time. All the time. So Charlotte says, I wanted to stay in touch with Trey, but he didn't want that. <laughs> really? Really? Did really? he try to stay in touch with Trey and his horrible mother? Oh, God. So funny. then they touch on Aiden and Carrie says, uh, uh, and Miranda says, that's Carrie's ex-fiance. 
And Carrie says Aiden has moved to Virginia. He got divorced five years ago. He sold his furniture company to West Elm for a ton of money. And then she's like, Naya goes, thank God for the internet. And Carrie's like, yeah, like, I'm not proud of it. But, you know, I, I totally stalked him out, which who amongst us has Super. not done this? Relatable. That is yes. the most relatable Carrie has ever been in any iteration of this universe. <laughs> so Carrie then goes home and drafts an email to Aiden, but doesn't send it yet. Now this email is so cringe because it's basically like, hey, partner, whatever they used to call you. Hey, color, stranger. But- yeah. But at the end, she writes, if this is not your email, whoever's reading this, carry on. Like someone else would have an email that's like, Aiden, whatever your last name is, at AOL.com. AOL.com. Because there are like a million Aiden Shaws everywhere. Right, yeah. it's With an AOL whatever. account or whatever it is. Whatever. So the next day, she and Seema are choosing their summer house. And Seema sees the email. And Carrie explains what it is. And they don't send it. I thought for sure it was going to send by accident. Because uh, yeah. suddenly, Seema, who says she has the latest in technology, doesn't know how to operate a MacBook. Which is new, but it's like, if you have even the newer iPhone that's not even out on market, shouldn't you know how to work this? Yeah, so weird. So weird. So the next day, Che calls Carrie. And out of nowhere, a crazy snowstorm has occurred. And Che says, this is supposed to turn to a bomb cyclone. Like, I don't know if we could go to WidowCon. They want to cancel. Carrie cannot cancel. She's like, I cannot cancel on this Karen who's terrorizing me about this. Yes. And they get to WidowCon, and this woman is killing it with comedy. Now, I've been in this situation where I've I've done readings, mm-hmm. and the person before you just kills it. And oh. you're like, I want to just cut a hole in the floor right now, Looney Tunes style, and just boop, fall right through. Yeah. So I felt for her in this moment, and it's just an impossible position to be in. But she, But she ends up reading. She ends up killing it. And at the end... Che tells her, you really helped me with some perspective. Like, your husband died, whereas my ego just died, and I think I need to to move on. So that's where we leave Carrie. Yeah. Until the end. I have a a final scene at the end. Yeah, and Che, thank you for waking the fuck up. Yes, your life is not that tragic. Move on. Oh, Che. Now, we don't see a lot of Nia Wallace. I feel like they're really having a hard time tying her in with Mm -hmm. the rest of the group. Unless Miranda keeps living with her. That's the only right. thing I could think of. So at Naya's, Miranda has overslept only to discover it's Sunday. And Naya is chilling at her table, working on her divorce from Andre Rashad. Full name only. Andre Rashad. Famous artist. musician, Andre Mashad, Rashad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a no fault, simple divorce, which Miranda says, I wish I had instead of my all my fault divorce. So later Miranda goes over to Chase. Now we're going to go with Miranda's story. And they're sleeping. And all of a sudden, Leslie, in the cringiest cringe of all things cringe, they agree to go to sleep. Like, in my opinion, tell me if I'm wrong. (laughs) Good night. Good night means we are agreeing to go to sleep right now. Do we agree on that? Yes. 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 All of a sudden... And I'm just going to act this out. Okay, we're snoring. We're sleeping. Good night, Miranda. Good night, love. Hey, everybody. I'm Che Diaz. And I'm here to say you're going to kick it in middle school, Joe. Like, what? (laughs) Miranda Miranda jumps 10 feet in the air and she's like, what is that voice you're doing? (laughs) That was the best reaction to have. Because I was like, even I was like, what the fuck is happening? (laughs) It jolted me. Yeah, Miranda's like, what are you doing? And Che explains like, I got to do these cameos. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So then they, they, so then everything quiets down again and it's, Hey, GD is here, Tori. I hope you kill it at the post office tomorrow. Like, it's so weird. It's so weird. So Miranda's like, fuck this. I'm out of here, which it would have been everybody's response in the yeah. world. So Miranda did you, gets up. Go did ahead. you listen to the Writer's Room podcast this no, week? No, please tell me how they defended it this week. Oh, did my Michael God. Did Patrick King make us feel like shit again or what? 
well, this is what they said. They were so proud of the fact that they incorporated, quote unquote, new technology, the use of cameos. No, I was stop. like, are you fucking kidding me? No, yes. Stop. No. Yes. They actually like applaud themselves for that, for integrating new technology. And it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Where do these people live? Where do these people they live? They are so fucking rich from original Sex in the City money that they are out of touch. It's not the characters that are out of touch. It's the fucking writers. They don't know what, what side is up. And then all the people they hired last season to kind of, you know, freshen it up and get it to standards, mm-hmm. you know, help them navigate this new world that these ladies were frozen in from. Um, they fired all of them. So <laughs> back to the old drawing board, literally. Okay, so Miranda's like, I have to leave. And Jay's like, oh, another thing to make me feel guilty about. Um, I shouldn't have to make you feel guilty about doing cameos in bed. <laughs> the <laughs> the agreed to go to sleep. So Jay says, um, Miranda goes, why do I get sad, Jay? And, you know, cameo gets like funny, funny, Jay. And Jay's like, because I'm not performing for you, Miranda. What, do you just want fuckboy comic, Jay? Um, okay, I have so many questions around this. First of all, Jay is not giving me a fuckboy vibe. Anymore. Well, according to the He's writers. Like, was. Okay, yeah, because that was the intent for Che's character to be fuckboy, basically. Just like this comic or performer, unattainable, yeah. mysterious. Which would have been fine if you step like that was annoying, don't get me wrong. But they morphed into having like a, a quasi marriage with Miranda this season. So like mm-hmm. it's very confusing. Okay. Miranda's like, I'm here trying to help you, and you need to at least leave the house once this week. And that's where we see Che go with um, Carrie to Widow County. Right. So later, Miranda comes home. Now, brace yourself, Leslie, for some more bad acting, because it's it's about to come <laughs> at you. <laughs> and I just want to say, and you yelled at me yesterday because I said, what is going on Cynthia Nixon? She looks like a Muppet. And here's <laughs> so mean. Leslie's like, stop. No, here's what I want to say, though. Cynthia Nixon is a beautiful woman. Yes, I've seen her in person recently. She's Gorgeous. being misstyled is mm-hmm. my point. Like they're not. So when when Miranda shows up back at Chase later, right? Like after yeah. the scene we're about to do with Steve, she looks beautiful. Her hair yeah. is styled. She it, I don't know what is going. Maybe maybe it's meant to reflect like her frazzledness. Probably it's meant to reflect that in her marriage or in the space that she says with Steve, she's like this mess that's unrecognizable. Yeah, and with Che, yeah. she's more pretty, I guess, or more I, I, herself. I guess. I, I guess. But I, I don't want you to, th- like, I'm not saying Cynthia Nixon is not beautiful. First of she's all. She's gorgeous. Yeah. First of all, I loved her gray hair in season one. Bring Me back too. the gray hair. People were gorgeous. really, like, against it. I liked gorgeous. it. Gorgeous. Okay. So <sighs> here comes Steve. And he comes in and they start talking about him finding, first of all, we learn Brady is working at the scout. Is that the bar scout scout? Yes. And, um, Steve announces he lied to therapy and he's not finding a new place. And then in what he is supposed to be a big dramatic scene. Yeah. But Steve just can't pull it off because he's not that kind of an actor. I, I shouldn't say that because I've seen Steve pull off some really good stuff. It, it's got to be the writing again, which is the problem. Yeah. David Einberg is a, it's great. Yeah. 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 Because, I mean, Steve from the original series could act. Yeah. So it's not the actor. Okay. So he freaks out and he says, this is my house. I built it. I built everything in here. I did this kitchen. I did this bookshelf. Whatever. And then he says to Miranda, you never wanted to come here to Brooklyn, which is true. Yes. You never wanted me, which might be true. It's true. And you never wanted Brady, which is also kind of true. Also true. And that mm-hmm. was when I gasped. I, I was gasped like, <gasps> So he says, so get the fuck out of our lives. And I, for a minute, I was like, uh, what? She immediately start sobbing and like hysterical sobbing like you would if somebody says the worst thing to you because basically you're saying like you'd even want our kid to be born like shut up mm-hmm. get out of here you know i felt so many emotions during that whole scene i felt hurt for miranda 
because I was like, what he's seeing is kind of true. You kind of yes. just went along yes. with it. You weren't happy about it. And you yes. have said it even in season one, like, oh, is motherhood worth it? When Nia Wallace was asking, she was like, eh, yeah. you know, you could take yeah. it or leave it, whatever. Which so, we yeah. Don't, we don't judge mothers of teenagers for asking that question every day of their lives. Exactly. It's perfectly <laughs> normal to be like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> what, have I- <laughs> what have I created? So, so I think my problem with the scene, Leslie, is this. Like, I think it's easy for it to be confused with acting, but it's really what it is, is it's the pacing of the dialogue. So he, Steve goes from zero to 100 real quick, mm-hmm. right? Kind of like. You could see the emotion starting to build when he's like, I lied, I'm not getting another place. But then like, choof, way off the charts. Yeah, Cynthia Nixon directed this episode, by the way. Right, but I think that's in the writing, though. Like, mm-hmm. without the climb. You know what I mean? Towards that accelerated pace. And then when he's begging her to stay, that's also very rushed. Like, there's no, like, okay, the situation is diffusing and I'm still... Like, it, he just immediately is diffused. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Well, the thing is, the writers have said, they didn't say it in this particular week's podcast, but they have said that they don't want to make Steve the bad guy because the bad guy is Miranda. So even when he shows his true colors, which we'll see in a few minutes when you discuss it, Mm -hmm. you're you're still supposed to, like, not pity him. You're supposed to like him and root for him because it's Steve. We love Steve. Miranda's the bad guy. I always like Steve. I always like Steve. But let's not forget, Steve is not blameless in their past. Not at all. He's cheated. Did on you her see before. the movie? <laughs> yeah. So, like, I, I don't, I, I guess my problem is this binary option of there's got to be a bad guy here. Why can't it be? You know, it's a little bit of Miranda's fault and it's a little bit of Steve's fault. Yeah. You know, Miranda's just as women often are. Miranda's just the one who's blamed for taking the out when when they both knew it was dead. Right. So, all right. So Miranda and Steve lay together in the bed and she's like, you know, trying to really talk to him about their relationship. And she just sees a condom, just empty condom wrapper right on the dresser, not even trying to hide it. She's like, okay, so let me guess you're banging the Whole Foods woman because you like you wouldn't buy organic produce if you weren't trying to get some trying to get laid because I guess that's in Steve's character. And um, (laughs) he's like, yeah, okay, I guess I am. But then he does say to her, and this is important, I never said I was a victim. He's Mm -hmm. like, I never said I was the victim. Because she's like, oh, here you are playing the victim. He's like, I never said I was the victim. See, she was all projecting that. Yeah. I guess what, you know, we're meant to believe. So then Miranda gathers her shit and she's like, I'm leaving and I will not be crying on the subway tonight. Boom, boom, drop my And And that was the moment where I was like, okay, I don't feel as bad for Steve because, you know, mm-hmm. I was thinking like, yeah, he is the victim. Look how horrible she like imploded his life. But yep. he's moved on. He's a dude. He moves on by laying on top of someone else. I kind of wish though that they didn't do that. Like I kind of wished that... Because this happens all the time. You know, we always see it portrayed in movies where men leave women. Yeah. And their lives are destroyed and they have to pick up. You know what I mean? I liked that it was this woman discovers her sexuality maybe different, leaves the marriage. You know what I mean? And has to. And like we see the real ramifications of that. Like, I don't know, but no, of course we got to take the cheesy way out and have Steve bonk a waitress or something. Because again, they don't want Steve to be the bad guy. And also Miranda, they're trying to give her a little bit of an out. Like she, see, she's not so bad after all. She, she was justified in what she did kind of thing. I guess. So she goes over to Chase and Che breaks up with Miranda and Miranda and Che recreate the same scene. It's very, it's very um, Playboy interviews with John and Yoko when Yoko oh, yes. was lying on the bed and John that, is laying on yeah, her naked. Famous, famous mm-hmm, photograph. Mm-hmm. It's very that kind of thing, except, oh my God, I cannot believe I just compared the pose of Che <laughs> and Miranda to John and Yoko. You did Ghost that. Of John that Lennon. was you. Ghost of John Lennon, I apologize. Please forgive me. Yoko, if you're listening, I apologize. Please forgive me. We love was you, it Yoko. Annie Leibovitz who shot that? I can't yes, remember. Yes, it Probably. was. Yeah, okay. Annie Leibovitz, I'm sorry. 
please hear my hear my thoughts and prayers. Okay. She's one actually one of my favorite photographers. Okay. We we're just talking about her. Oh, we interviewed guys. If you want to hear, if you watch Temptation Island, I know this is weird. <laughs> Mary Payne and I interviewed Mark L. Wahlberg, not Marky Mark. Aww. Mark L. Wal- Wahlberg, the host of Temptation Island and Antique Roadshow and a couple other things. Um, that'll be over on Pink Shade if you want to check that out. And he was saying his wife is friends with Demi Moore. And Ooh. she was at his wedding or Demi Moore's wedding to Bruce Willis. And Annie Leibovitz did the photos for that wedding. That's how oh. that's how we've talked about her before today. OK. Oh, brilliant. If only. So now we're at Charlotte's and she was supposed to call Nobu. To, oh, wait, let me back up. No, I forgot. Hold on. First, we are at LTW's. Yes. Yes. And LTW and Herbert, husband. Yes, husband. And the kids are all in bed when she sees Rock's ad and she calls Charlotte. And they're like freaking out together. And Charlotte's like, doesn't Rock look gorgeous? And then Charlotte's like, don't worry, Rock. Gorgeous is gender neutral. Okay, okay. You don't need to hit us over the head with this, Charlotte. We get it. <laughs> And um, so one of LTW's kids jumps on her husband's dick and they have to go. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) This is a storyline. This is a storyline. Yeah. LTW is like, how bad is your dick? Is it broken? Because if it is, I'm out of here. (laughs) Okay. Now they discover their big dilemma of the day is that they discover they both have events on Wednesday. His is a campaign event and hers is a talk at MoMA about Mm -hmm. her film the documentary that she did honoring three black pioneer women i think she says in law education and something else i can't remember yeah i I can't remember so they try to figure out who will go to whose event and so later when the snow comes ltw's car service is canceled Mm mm-hmm Husband offers to take her because they have heated seats. And baby, you know how you love heated seats. Like, he just constantly is hovering over her in that chair. Yeah. Every episode, I'm going to put a, like a, what do you call that? A cut? Help me. Like a collage? <laughs> a smash. When you smash all different things together. I'm going to put a collage together. Uh, a smash cut. A I'm smash cut, a smash yeah. cut together. Of Herbert just looming over LCW <laughs> trying to sex her up at that vanity that she always sits at. <laughs> yeah, always, always. But I so, love that he's so into his wife like that, you know? He is, but I mean, okay. So Herbert offers to give her a ride. I don't see anything wrong with this. Like, well, look, my car's coming, so let mm-hmm. me drop you off. She's like, nope, nope, I'll make my own way. Yeah. And she trudges across the bomb cyclone in her high heels. She takes her wig off. She puts a hat on. She's looking fine. She trudges over to MoMA. She's in the the bathroom at MoMA. She put, throws her hair on. She straightens her outfit out. And she's like, nothing is going to stop me. Now, I will say, uh, her talk was probably more interesting to me than the entire rest of the show. Like I it was very interesting. Yeah. focused on that that talk. <laughs> okay, I, let's rewind. Go ahead. So the scene of her walking in that snow with mm-hmm. that outfit and covering her hair, and first of all, Nicole Ari Parker is gorgeous. We all know gorgeous. this. Gorgeous. So that face, just seeing that beautiful face in that snow, cinematic. You know, it was a beautiful. It was directly beautifully. It was beautiful. She looked amazing. I thought it was great. The thing with her, when she gets to the restroom and she takes off all these head wraps and all these things to put Mm -hmm. on her wig and that older black woman being there watching her as she had taken numerous precautions to protect her hair so that her wig Mm -hmm. and she looks perfectly fine. She says a little, you know, a little storm is not going to get not going to stop us. And she was like, that's right. Was so powerful. For someone like me, I am a person of color. I'm Dominican. I have, you know, quote unquote, bad hair, as mm-hmm. um, Dominicans like to categorize it, where it's not fine hair. It's not straight hair. It's not really curly. It's like a little coarse. So okay. it's chemically treated and all that good stuff. So mm-hmm. here's the thing. I myself have gone through many a lengths to protect my hair. When I go get my blowout, 
that shit better last me a week. So mm-hmm. I am taking all precautions. I'm putting head scars. I'm putting um, a wig cap on. I'm putting like double hats. Like we take so much care of our hair because for us, at least for Dominicans, I'm speaking, uh, like our hair is like our beauty. Like that's part of yeah. our beauty. And if your hair's not done, then what's wrong with you? And for me, the fact that they shared that on that show was so beautiful, I thought, because that's something that probably you would have never seen. I see women walking around with head wraps all over Washington Heights because they're saving their hair for the evening when they go out, you know? So it's perfectly normal. As beautiful and as powerful as that scene was, it felt like it didn't belong on this show because I don't understand how all of this marries together with the other storylines. Like, that was my only thing. I just felt like it was such a powerful scene and it kind of got wasted on this episode. That's how I felt. I don't know. Well, two things. One, I agree with you. But number two, it's funny you say that because I I sensed when I was watching it, and I don't credit these writers with a lot, but I do think I sensed that there was something bigger to that scene. Yes. I sensed that it had to do with hair. But, like, as a white person... I don't really like to comment on hair, right? Yeah. And I just don't. So I sensed that there was a cultural meaning, a heaviness to it. Yeah. I was hoping you would speak to it. I'm glad, I'm really glad that you did. It was I beautiful. Agree with you. I agree with you. It was a beautiful scene. What the fuck is it doing here? Exactly. Like, that's the problem with a lot of these characters, which makes me sad because, of course, it's always, it's the, it happens to be the characters of color. It's yeah. like they're, shoehorning them in and it doesn't seem organic and i'm like i don't know how they go about fixing that i i I don't know i don't because i want them there don't get me wrong i want these people there i just don't Mm -hmm. know how they fit into this world like make them fit better like seema is basically samantha it just happens to be indian that's the only difference i mean seema fits it maybe you're right maybe it's because they've I don't She's know how, Samantha. Please correct me if I say this in an offensive way, okay? Because I don't mean it. Mm-hmm. They seem to have stripped her almost of her ethnicity yeah. to fit her into the Samantha role. Exactly. 100%. Like, I don't know anything culturally about Seema at all. We just had and that one episode to. last season. Yeah, last that season, was it. That was it. But mm-hmm. nothing this season. And, like, I would like to know that. Like, we get a little bit of that with LTW with the the mother-in-law. Yeah. You know what I mean? And stuff like that. Like, I feel like they're they're giving us those heavy cultural moments, but they're only centering it around LTW. Yeah. And I don't know why. It's it's heavy. Maybe she'll get a spinoff. Oh, my God. I, I would watch that. Spin-off. I would totally. See, that's the thing. In her own world, and I think even with Nia Wallace, because that actress, oh, I forgot her name. She's also a great actress. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes I'm just like, oh, my God, they're not fitting her in right. Like, they're just shoehorning her in. I don't want them to be just a token black friend. Like, come right. on, give them. Yes. These are real mm-hmm. actors with real chops. Mm-hmm. Like, give them material. Mm-hmm. I agree 100%. So, all right. She's there at the talk and she's talking about, you know, I wanted to make this film for young women of color like myself who didn't have any idols and didn't have any guidance. And then then they undermine the entire message by having Herbert walk in and her saying, like, for those who don't get support like I do at home. Yep. And I was just like, okay, like, I get it. And it's cute. But, like, I don't know. I loved her message of, like, I'm doing it on my fucking own. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. So, all right. That's her. Now we're Charlotte's. And Charlotte was supposed to call Nobu to make a reservation for for Blake and Lily. And Anthony, who, thank God, is a part of this show, and we always have him around this family specifically because their their storylines are not great. And Anthony makes everything better. Mm-hmm. Anthony says, you're 17. Go to a Shake Shack. Like, exactly. Okay, yeah, he's right. Lily says, I can't lose my virginity after Shake Shack. And they're all like, what? What just say? <laughs> and she walks out of the room. I will tell you, Leslie, this scene is pretty accurate because my daughters feel safe and comfortable sharing things with me that I never would have shared with my mother. Oh my god, I'm still hiding shit from my mom. 
yeah, like my daughters will just share things with me and I'm like, I don't need to know that. I don't need to know Yikes! who's feeling what, who's rubbing what, who's doing what. I don't need to know any of it. Just, I prefer to live in ignorance. So I have a question for you. As a parent mm-hmm. of teenage girls or, yeah. you know, yep. of teenagers yep. just in general, mm-hmm. what was it that you did that allowed them to feel this comfortable with you? Because I feel like there's still things that I would not be able to share with my mother. Same. I, I don't think it's something I did. I think it's a cultural shift. Mm, okay. Like, I think that we've lifted a lot of the shame off of sex around women, especially. Yeah. That they feel like there there's this sense of empowerment. Mm-hmm. Like, I they own their sexuality. And I think that's a good thing. But, yeah. it's like, it's real hard to hear <laughs> come I out of your kid's that. mouth. I mean, I have a younger sister. She's 11 years younger than me. And I don't want to yeah. know about anything she's up to like that. Like, <laughs> and I know I'm the sister and I'm supposed to give her advice and stuff. Like, she'll share mm-hmm. things with me. And mm-hmm. um, and she's like, it's okay that I talk to you about this. And I'm like, of course. You know, I'm cool. You know, I'm cool. I'm here. Mm-hmm. Better do You're this. like Charlotte in this moment. Exactly. But I'm dying on the inside. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Me too. There have been times they've told me stuff while I'm driving. I just want to drive my car right off a cliff. (laughs) No! All right. So Charlotte... Oh, wait. One funny thing is um, Charlotte says to Harry, I think maybe she needed a little more attention. We didn't see it. And Anthony goes, could be. I once lit my little sister's coat on fire. I was here for that. (laughs) So Charlotte follows Lily into her room and she's like, can you stop playing your piano? Like it makes everything sound sad. (laughs) <laughs> and Charlotte tells her, I'm glad you shared this with me because my parents made sex seem so evil. And so, so I'm trying to be sex positive. Now I will say when Charlotte was like, Oh, come on my tits. Blah, 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 blah. I had a yeah. real problem with that. This, I did not have a problem with. Cause I feel like this is in character for her. Like she would try yeah. to be this way. She Even will be uncomfortable. On the inside, she's dying. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, she would be uncomfortable, but she's at least trying because we know mm-hmm. what Charlotte, she wanted to be a mom so bad that she mm-hmm. would do anything for these kids. Yes. Yep. So she's like, you know, of course you have to use condoms. Lily's like, of course. And then she's like, I really want you to focus on your pleasure, not just his. And Lily's like, okay. All right. Like, <laughs> you're being sex annoying now. Now on the snow day, Charlotte is making hot cocoa and Lily decides she's going to lose her virginity on that day because Blake's parents are stuck in Connecticut. Later, Charlotte, Rock, and Harry are watching Edward Scissorhands, which I appreciated a little bit yeah. of that. And Lily calls to say they have no condoms and he refuses to go to a drugstore over there because they'll tell his parents, which, okay. This leads to, uh, one funny part I do want to say is, Charlotte takes the call and she's in a different room. Yeah. And she's like, what's wrong? You know, and they're talking about the condoms. And you see Harry coming in from the back. <laughs> yes. And she says, like, something about condoms. And you see Harry just turn around and go back. I was like, okay. I see you, Harry. I feel oh, it. I feel you. Oh, you know, name drop time. I actually have a friend in common, like a real life friend in common with him. Yeah. My teacher. Really? <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. It's really cool. I'm like, I need to talk to him at some point about this. <laughs> So, I had a lot of problems with this. First of all, I feel like Lily blackmailed Charlotte by saying, okay, well, now I'll just have him pull out. Bye. Yeah, that was not cool. It was not cool. And uh, I don't know if, I don't know if I would have done this if I were Lily's mother. Mm. I would be like, I'm sending a car for you and you're coming home right now. That's the more appropriate response, Mm -hmm. I think. Like, there's a difference between knowing and knowing. You know, right. I mean? there's a difference between my kid coming to me and saying, like, I've decided I'm going to become sexually active with this person that I love, blah, blah, blah. There's a difference between that and being like, I'm going to his house to bang him right now. I'll see you later. Yeah. Bring me some condoms. It's, it, I don't know. I'm not shaming anybody. I, if you're the ki- person who's going to go out during the bomb cyclone and get condoms for your kids, great. I just was like, eh, I don't. I feel kind of icky about this scene. <laughs> yeah, because then in the context that I saw it, I'm like, let's say if this was my sister asking me for this, I'd be like, oh fuck. And then, then I was like, I would do it for her. 
I'd yeah, be in the snow yes. and do all that and be like, why the hell is this my problem? You know, bitching the whole time. But if it was time. a daughter, you might be like, I'm sending like, Come in home. the car. Come get, home. Get your ass in that car and yeah. go home. Yeah. Yeah, the so, divide between uh, my mom and I really lies in the fact that it's cultural and also Catholicism, you know? it's She's very yeah. Catholic. So yeah. that's going to put a barrier right there, you know? Yes, so. yes. So one of the weird scenes in this, too, is Charlotte calls Carrie to ask Carrie if she has any condoms because it's the bomb cyclone and lost doors are closed. Yeah. And Carrie decides, like, she's just going to pepper Charlotte with questions right now. Like, are you serious right now? It's a, like a bomb cyclone. I'm freezing. Yeah. Just say yes or no. Do you have the condoms? <laughs> it was weird. So she finds them. She delivers them. Lily gives her a hug. Now, the final scene is Carrie sitting at her computer and she says, and just like that, I realize some relationships are meant to stay in the past and some aren't. And we see that she presses send on the Aiden Shaw email. Yes. Okay. Next time on Leslie, you ready? Yep. Aiden asks Carrie to dinner on Valentine's day. Miranda has a date with someone else. Oh, guys. Uh, I'll save my Che rant for one second. Anthony says Drew Barrymore wants him and a hot fella on the show for Valentine's Day. Charlotte realizes she has no time to breathe between being a momager and a maid. And then Carrie meets Aiden after 13 years. And but we do like, not see him. We right. Just hear they're him like, voice. does he look good? Yeah, fuck yeah, he looks good. Yeah, because he's an XO kitty. He's a dad. <laughs> Hello. He looks hot. So do you think this is the last we see of Che Diaz? I think for now we will. I think maybe they'll try to... I just feel like these writers are going to shoehorn Che some way. Like, let's show a little scene mm. of Che like discovering themselves or being sad without mm. Miranda. I just feel like we're not done with Che. I, I think like they're going to keep bringing this character back no know what this made me feel sad for is it sarah ramirez who who's the actor yeah sarah ramirez i feel really sorry for them because they are not a bad actor not at all has a beautiful voice as well yeah did broadway very accomplished and they're just gonna be jds forever yeah. When I see them, I'm like, oh, that's shady ass. <laughs> I know. I think that Sada's gonna have to like grow her, grow out their hair to kind of look different from Che because otherwise okay. it's gonna keep happening. It's bad. And let's face it, when we think of Che Diaz, we all think of, hey, it's Che Diaz here. Like we all think of that <laughs> version of Che Diaz, not the Did, not the oh vulnerable Che Diaz that we saw briefly. So there was this mashup. that This came out during the first season of And Just Like That. It was like a mashup between like the New York Housewives and Che Diaz. And mm-hmm. it's like Ramona Singer, one of the original Housewives. She's super problematic. But anyway, she's like walking around talking in Manhattan. And then um, you hear, hey, it's Che Diaz. And she goes, wah! She like tosses the phone <laughs> and she's startled. What actually happens in that scene is that she passes, I think, by a Halloween store or something and something oh. pops out at her. But they mashed it together where it looked so plausible and it was so funny. I, I should find to, that. You need to find that and try to put it in Backdoor Friends if you can. Yeah, I have to find that. It's okay. so funny. Um, I have one piece of gossip that I wanted to discuss with Harry and Megan. Are they Mm -hmm. having problems? Are they not? Let's discuss. Yes, I did see that yesterday. Okay, so rumor has it, page six basically, is saying that they're going to take some time apart to reevaluate. And I'm just like, oh, Harry, was all that worth it? Because now you can't go back to the royal family. On Facebook, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. What is going to happen here? Well, the kids belong to the monarch, so they're fine. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to tell you. It's true. It's it's really true. weird. It's yeah. a really weird system. Um, ooh, that's going to be tough because if rumors are correct, which a lot of the tabloids from the UK suggest and reports, that William is not very happy with Harry at all. He doesn't want to really mm. do anything with him because of the memoir, Spare. So I, love I don't Harry. know. 
I do love Harry. He's so mischievous. Has a similar spirit to Diana because when you yes. see like videos of them like yes. playing around, very yep. similar to Diana. Yeah. Yep. This could be, you know, this could be this breakup if it happens could be on the level of Cody and Janelle breaking up. <laughs> Cody and Christine breaking up. <laughs> did you watch the the three part documentary on Netflix on Harry and Meghan? I did. Yeah, that was long. It was long. Um, (laughs) It was long. But there's a lot of revisionist history and a lot of documentations of different articles and different interviews. Like, they don't even reference the Oprah interview, like, what was discussed. They kind of reference it, like, oh, it kind of made people upset. But it's like, yeah, because there were a lot of inconsistencies. So the problem, I feel so bad for Megan, because as a woman of color, I'm sure it's difficult for her. And I'm sure that all these racist things happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure she felt like she was being discriminated. I get it. I've been... I felt that way too, but sometimes because you feel a certain way doesn't necessarily mean that the person has malicious intent. Now, if they do, then of course you address right, that. Right. But when you feel uneasy, you voice it, and then that person can learn and be like, "Oh, see, I didn't think of that." Blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I guess because you're royal, you don't talk on it, and then you just kind of hold it in and tell Oprah. I don't know. Yeah, the royals don't talk about anything. <laughs> yeah, they don't have feelings. <laughs> Um, speaking of, I'm fully looking forward to The Crown coming back, and will that will be covered eventually when it reappears on Little Miss Recap, so stay tuned for that. Ooh, I love The Crown. I love it so much. I love the royals. I love it. I love, love it. Love it. Too. I right, volunteer tribute. Thank, thank you so much for doing this with me. You're my favorite person to talk about Sex in the City with. And just like that. I really that. appreciate it. And just like that. Oh my god, I'm doing it too. Yeah, it's hard. It's really hard. <sighs> And that's it, guys. Subscribe, share, review. We appreciate all of you. And thank you very much. Thanks, Leslie.